Chapter 1 The Basics The stock market offers many ways to make money, both in the short term and the long term. For beginners, however, the stock market can seem incredibly intimidating and unintuitive. Avid investor and author of A Beginner's Guide to the Stock Market Matthew Kratter wants to change. He sees the stock market as the world's greatest opportunity machine and believes anyone is capable of using it to their advantage. In the following chapters, you'll learn the basics of understanding and investing in the stock market. Let's start simple. What are stocks? Stock, a share of ownership in a company. When you buy a stock in a company, you become a shareholder, or partial owner, of that company. Imagine every company is like a big pizza with slices people can purchase. As of 2019, McDonald's, for example, was a company with 765,317,332 shares, or slices, available for purchase. Each of these slices was valued by the market at $187.62. This is what people mean when they say that the stock is trading at 187.62. If you were to buy 10 shares of McDonald's, you would own 10 slices of the company. If we multiply the number of shares a company has and their value, we get something called the market cap, capitalization the current value of the entire company. In this case, McDonald's market cap was $143.58 billion in 2019. Market caps are also used to rank companies. Whichever has the biggest market cap is the world's largest. The stock price and market cap of a company change in value based on how traders and investors are buying and selling the stock. If a lot of people are buying the stock, the stock moves up, increases. If few people are buying the stock, the stock moves down. Sometimes, however, the market makes temporary mistakes about a company's value. For example, in 1996 Apple was valued at less than $3 billion. Then Steve Jobs introduced the iPod and iPhone and its value slowly ramped up. What this suggests is that the current market may not be the most useful metric for picking a stock. Thus, Kratter recommends having a forward-looking mentality. He quotes hockey star Wayne Gretzky, I skate to where the puck is going to be not to where it has been. When it comes to the stock market, it's important to look towards where the puck might go, not where it's been. For example, a novice trader might see a low-priced stock as a bargain, but if we think forward, this strategy probably isn't ideal. It can take time for new information to get priced into a stock, which means that this stock could continue to move lower for days or even weeks, Kratter says. Suggests always looking towards what the market will look like in three to six months when making an investment decision. The main ideas. Chapter 1. When you buy a stock in a company, you become a partial owner of that company. Market capitalization is the current value of the entire company. Before making an investment, consider what the next three to six months will look like. Chapter 2. How to buy stocks. Stocks are traditionally bought and sold on a stock exchange, where buyers and sellers swap stocks for money. These stock exchanges no longer look like the movie scenes of the past where men stood in circles waving papers and yelling out buying and selling orders. Nowadays, stock exchanges are run by computers that match up buyers and sellers who want to exchange their stock for cash, or vice versa, at a certain price. Some of the most well-known stock exchanges include New York Stock Exchange, NYC includes high-quality stocks, aka blue chip, like Coca-Cola and McDonald's, Nasdaq, includes tech stocks like Netflix and Apple. NYC stocks are identified with a ticker, stock symbol. For example, Coca-Cola is KO and Home Depot is eight. NASDAQ stocks are normally identified with four-letter tickers. For example, Apple is Apple and Netflix is Netflix. Some stocks are two letters, like Facebook, now known as Meta, which was FB. As an everyday person, you can't buy and sell stock independently, you need a broker or brokerage account. The broker is the middleman that gives you access to a stock exchange. Common ones include Charles Schwab, Interactive Brokers, TD Ameritrade, TradeStation, Fidelity, E-Trade, and Robinhood. The process to open up a brokerage account will vary, but generally you'll need to fill out online paperwork and transfer money into the account. Then you can purchase stock by locating them via their ticker. Buying stock requires finding someone who is willing to sell at the price you're willing to pay. These two points are known as the bid price, what people are willing to buy for, and the ask price, what people are willing to sell for. The difference between these two is called the bid asks. So when you're buying stock, you'll be given two purchase options, a market order or a limit order. A market order indicates that you'd like to buy stock as soon as possible, no matter the price. 
This may mean that you'll pay more than what the stock was last valued. A limit order specifies a price you're willing to pay for the stock. If you place a limit order to buy Microsoft stock at $120.25, your order will be filled only if there is someone willing to sell stock at that price or lower. If there isn't, your order will never be filled. Kratter always uses limit orders for his stocks, just in case the price shifts dramatically between when he puts the order in and when it's filled. Lastly, when you put in a limit or market order to buy stock, you'll be given two options, day order or GTC order. A day order will be executed during regular market hours. In the US, normal trading hours are roughly 9.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. A GTC order, good till cancelled, will be valid during market hours every day until the order is executed or cancelled. Now that you know the difference between these types of orders, when should you put in your trades? Kratter recommends trading during market hours, but, if you do trade during hours when the market is closed, use a limit order. By setting a limit to how much you're willing to pay, you won't have to worry about how the price might jump when the market first opens. The main ideas, chapter 2. In order to buy stock, you need a brokerage account which will give you access to a stock exchange. A market order says you want the stock as soon as possible, regardless of the price. A limit order sets a limit for how much you're willing to pay for the stock. Chapter 3 ETFs Indices Now that you have a basic understanding of what a stock exchange is and the rules of buying stock, what stock should be your first invest- Many investors choose to put their money into a basket of stocks called an index. This is considered one of the safest and most conservative ways to invest. There are a few indices you can consider. First, the S&P 500. This is a basket of the 500 companies in the US with the largest market caps. Secondly, the Dow Jones Industrial Average, DJIA. This is arguably the United States' most famous index and dates back to 1896. Unlike the S&P 500, the Dow only contains 30 companies. Over time, some are kicked out and new ones supped in, Kratter explains. For example, General Electric was recently removed and replaced by Walgreens. Lastly, Nasdaq 100 is an index that includes most tech companies, like Apple and Facebook. Investing in any of these indices can be costly. If you were to invest in the S&P 500, it would require you to buy all 500 companies' stocks at the same time. Luckily, there's an alternative, Exchange Traded Fund, ETFs. An ETF is like a stock that represents an index. ETFs are less costly because they don't require you to individually buy each stock in an index. The ETF for the S&P 500 index trades under the ticker SPY. The ETF for the DJIA trades under the ticker DIA. The ETF for NASDAQ trades under the ticker QQQ. So, if you were to buy shares of the QQQ, you'd be investing in tech companies like Google, Amazon, Facebook, and others in the Nasdaq. Buying indices is a strategy referred to as indexing. Because it requires less buying and selling, it's a passive form of investing. If you choose to invest in indices, you're guaranteed to reap the benefits of highly successful companies with lower investment expenses. Once you decide you'd like to invest in indices, Kratter recommends investing the same number of dollars in an index every month. This way you don't buy all your stock when the market is at its peak. By buying a stock or index ETF at different times, you are allowing the wiggles of the stock to smooth themselves out, since you are always buying at a different price. The main ideas. Chapter 3. An ETF functions like a stock and allows you to invest in an index, which would otherwise be costly. An ETF is like stock for an index a collection of stocks from various companies. Common ETFs include SPY, which represents S&P 500, or QQQ, which represents the NASDAQ. Chapter 4 Dividend Stocks You can create passive income income you don't actively work for by investing in stocks that offer dividends. Dividends are a cash payment you receive from the company whose stock you've purchased. A dividend stock will offer returns every three months. Kratter compares dividends to owning real estate, except that you never need to go over to fix the toilet. Kratter argues that investing in dividend stocks is a great way to build wealth. This is because you can use the dividend payment to buy more dividend stocks. He shares one famous story of investor Ronald Reed as an example. Ronald Reed spent most of his life as a gas attendant and then later as a janitor at JCPenney. Despite making little money, Reed put all his disposable income towards dividend stocks. When he died at 92 years of age, he left behind $8 million. You don't need to have a high salary to become a millionaire. You just need to spend less than you earn, and invest the rest in dividend stocks, 
Kratos. Investing in dividend stocks can often be more lucrative than putting your money in a savings account. Let's consider the following idea. Imagine you buy a dividend stock at $60 a share that pays you 45 cents every three months, quarterly. By the end of the year, you'll have an additional $1.80, your annual total in dividends. If you divide $1.80 by the price you paid for the stock, $60, you'll get 0.03 or 3%. This is the stock's dividend yield. Compare this to a savings account yield, where you might make 2% in interest each year. And we can see why investing in dividend stocks is appealing. However, a stock might go down in value, which wouldn't happen in a savings account. Successful companies will increase their dividends every year. This means the longer you hold that stock, the more your yield will increase. For example, Warren Buffett bought Coke in 1988 and now his dividend yield is over 60%. In other words, he now receives more in Coke dividends every 1.7 years than the grand total that he paid for his original share. Coke is a unique kind of dividend stock referred to as an aristocrat stock, stocks whose companies raised their dividends every year for the last 25 years. To invest in aristocrat stocks, you can buy shares of NOBL, which is the ProShares S&P 500 Dividend Aristocrats ETF. The main ideas, Chapter 4. Dividend stocks will offer cash payments you can reinvest in more stocks. Dividend stocks can offer a higher yield than a traditional savings account, but in a more volatile context. Aristocrat stocks refer to those of companies who have increased their dividends yearly for the last 25 years. Chapter 5. Make money from growth stocks. A growth stock is the stock of any company that is expected to grow its revenue and earnings rapidly. To trade and make money from growth stocks, Kratter recommends ignoring a common metric people use to value stocks, a high P.E. price to earnings ratio. A company's P.E. is a financial ratio that compares a company's current share price to how much they earn per share. Companies that are growing quickly will have a P.E. of 25 or more. Microsoft, for example, has a P.E. of 27.70, and Amazon has a P.E. of 70. Companies that are not doing as well will have a P.E. below 10, bed, bath, and beyond's PE is 7, for example. This may indicate underlying issues. A PE can tell you about a company's growth. Kratter recommends using another metric for predicting how a stock's price will move. He believes that we should be investing in stocks that are hitting new 52-week highs. A company hitting a 52-week high has achieved a new highest price over the last 52 weeks. Investing in growth stocks might sound risky to some if the company is hitting an all-time high doesn't that mean it can only go downhill? But Kratter argues that if you look at great growth stocks of the past, you'll notice that they live in these all-time highs for a while. He says, there is, in fact, something wonderful and magical about a stock at an all-time high. Every single holder of the stock has a profit. You can determine which stocks are hitting a 52-week high by considering their moving average, the average calculation of a stock's price over a period of time. If the stock is trading above its 50-day moving average, and that 50-day moving average is above the 200-day moving average, this stock is trending up. If the stock is trading below its 200-day moving average, or if the 50-day moving average is trading below the 200-day moving average, the stock is trending downwards. As a last point to consider, once you've invested in a growth stock, when do you know it's time to sell? And there are other times you might need to sell without making the profit you hoped for. Kratter says that for short-term strategies, you should consider selling if the stock is closing below its 50-day moving average. Furthermore, you can consider exiting when the stock closes below its 200-day moving average. This is useful for long-term strategy. If either of these criteria is true, the stock is in a downtrend and you should consider exiting regardless of whether you're at a profit or a loss. The main ideas, Chapter 5. Kratter recommends ignoring a company's P.E. and focusing instead on stocks hitting a 52-week high. Companies hitting a 52-week high are likely to offer profit for a long time. Consider selling your stock when profits are 300% up from your entry. Chapter 6. The biggest mistakes you can make. So far you've learned some of the basic skills required to begin your investment journey. To conclude, Kratter offers his five commandments for avoiding the common mistakes most beginners make. Kratter's first commandment is, don't buy stocks that are hitting 52-week lows. These are downward trending stocks. While many investors say that buying cheap stock is a good strategy, Kratter believes you're much more likely to succeed investing in upward trending stocks. A stock trending downwards is often only showing the tip of the iceberg. Things are likely to get worse, even when it comes to high-quality companies. For example, 
General Electric was once massively profitable but kept reporting one bad thing after another, causing the stock to crash from 30 to 7. Kratos' second commandment is don't trade penny stocks, stocks valued under $5. This is because most low-priced stock is associated with a low-quality company so they're probably unable to trade on the NYSE or NASDAQ stock exchanges. Instead, they trade on the OTCBB, over-the-counter bulletin board, or pink sheets. These exchanges have more relaxed financial reporting requirements, which can open you up to potential fraud or shell companies. The third mistake most novice traders make is shorting stocks, that is, betting a stock will go down in a certain time frame. This can be dangerous for novices because in order to short a stock, you need to borrow shares of the stock from your broker. Then you sell the shares on the open market. If the price falls, you can buy back your shares at a lower price for a profit. However, if the stock goes up, you will be forced to buy back shares at a much higher price than you guessed, perhaps for more than you can afford. Kratos fourth commandment is don't trade on margin. When you buy a stock on margin, you have to borrow money from your broker. This allows you to purchase more stock than you have cash for in your account. The broker will lend you this money at a high interest rate and if the stock goes up, you'll make that money back. If it goes down, however, your account will take a serious hit. When you open a brokerage account, you may be given the option to open a margin account or a cash account. If you open a margin account, you don't ever need to go on margin. However, if you don't trust yourself not to borrow, go for the cash account. Finally, don't trade other people's ideas. There are two reasons not to trade based on what other people tell you. The first, that person probably doesn't know what they're doing. The second, if you get a really good trading idea that's not your own, you probably won't have the conviction to hold on when the going gets tough. If instead you've researched and chosen a trading opportunity yourself, you're much more likely to stick with it even through difficult patches. The main ideas, Chapter 6. Kratta recommends not investing in companies whose stock is hitting 52-week low. You can reduce your risk of loss by avoiding penny stocks, trading on margin, and shorting stocks. Make trades based on your own research, not other people's ideas.